Welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. I leveled up. I traded some things with the crows. <clears throat> I got another Estus flask. And now let's go down here. Oh, do I not have a... Oh great, is there a dog here? Okay. Uh, I'll fight this guy. is supposed to like do is make it like as you level up like show you how much easier it is to beat him or something because I mean this is starting to get tedious. <laughs> you did fight him a few times in the first one um, like in Dark Souls 1 ah, Dark Souls 2 original but um club oops but uh it was less often and I don't know it's getting, it gets a little tedious when he follows you around but whatever not an elegant weapon by any means but a beastly thing priest's chime Sacred chime granted to high-ranking clerics. Miracles and hexes. Drang Lake was the home of many clerics, but King Vendrick held a lukewarm opinion of their powers and kept them only as attendants to ceremony. In a sense, Drang Lake was not the place for a cleric with any ambition. No. Okay, well... Cheeky breaky. Um. Okay, so we're gonna do that later. So what we'll do here, I guess, is we'll finish off the last best deal, and then we'll take care of like a few things that have been kind of. Oh, there's no person there. Um, I guess we could, oh my gosh, best steel keys just right there. Nice timing. Okay. Ooh, best steel key looks really weird. Key the cells of the lost Bastille. Long ago, a Bastille lord, driven to desperation by the rapid spread of curse across the land, began to see each subject as a carrier of the blight and lock them away in droves. This entire Bastille was turned into a prison and left abandoned to rot with its prisoners. So yeah, was not. It wasn't Vendrick. It was. Uh... Well, there's no guy here either. Can't find it. Okay, there's a dragons. <laughs> Is there a new boss fight? Um, I don't have any Pharaoh's lock stones, so I, I'm gonna need to get a lot more. Is coming from. Oh, great. Hmm. 
That looks like a terrible fate. So yeah, if I had just gone down, jumped across, and went up here, it just would be leading right here. That's just clipping. There you go. I always get a little nervous of those guys. Oh, interesting. That's one of the guys that was shooting at us earlier. Oh! <laughs> okay. I know there's guys in here. Used to be a bonfire aesthetic. I don't know if it is any longer. But. Oh, green blossom. Uh, we've read that before, yeah. What? This is, uh, I'll call this the Pursuer episode, I guess. That's a slower one. Oh, it is again. Tip. Just stand right next to him. Alright, well how many more of those guys are we going to fight? Bracing Knuckle. Oh my god. Slows equipment degradation. Knuckle ring worn by Roy the Explorer. Slows equipment degradation. Expensive flashy gear will not always make life easier for you. Sometimes you just need your tried and true equipment to last to last the long haul. I thought we were going to have to go down to uh, the depths or whatever it's called to get that. <clears throat> That's handy. Ugh. Oh. I hate jumping in this game. Okay, more torch stuff. And going this way just exempts us from coming back easily. In fact, I might just use a homeward. Come on. Or I guess I could, um, it's a golden wing shield. A blue shield with a gold relief of wings, likely a symbol of guardianship used by the Knights of Blue. Uh, contains ma materials enchanted by magic, allowing spells to be deflected by parrying. Um, great. Quick 
travel. Wait, hold on a second. Okay. Oh, so there's one guy here. To be fair for that pursuer thing, like that was... That was like an optional area. I mean, I just seem to be hitting the optional areas at this point. So, I mean... Fair enough, I guess. I don't know. Ooh. Oh, I see. He's, like, in there. Okay. Oh, very honorable. Alrighty. Yeah, no what? No parrying, I guess. I was trying to catch him up. All right. He's there now. I don't know where that other royal soldier came from, though. Okay, we're just trying to get through here. people coming up. Of course I do. There's you. Okay, so I don't know if I'm gonna get that. I guess I can try, but um, I always had trouble getting that in the past. Oh wow, there's just a ton of people in here. I suppose one of these can explode. Oops. Ran out of stamina. Um, okay. Skeptic Spice, we heard that. So yeah, we can go in here. And, uh, we could drop down and get the Bonfire Aesthetic. If it's the Bonfire Aesthetic, I don't need it. If it's some other cool thing, you know. I don't want to do that. We've already had too many obstacles here. So is this the room with all the ferrous lock stones? Wilted dusk herb. A dusk herb in bloom works wonders, but it will wilt in the blink of an eye. Needless to say, finding such an herb is of the utmost difficulty. Yeah. Oh, these guys are in here. That's cool because, I mean, it was really hard to farm their uh, claws. I remember I was doing a 
playthrough. Oh, come on. I guess they might cut through shields or something, but... Um... Guy with a sword and a scroll. Huh. Anyway, I would I would try to uh, farm those guys in New Game Plus with bonfire settings or bone staff. Uh, I don't think I have. Yeah. yeah, that's why we weren't originally coming here. Uh, bone staff. Pairing dagger. Twin blade. Unlike stair weapons, this dagger is intended for parrying. Accomplishments are forever out of reach of those who constantly fear failure. A two warrior hones the body and mind and peers far beyond the immediate hardship. Yep, that's probably how we should think about it. A twin blade fashioned from rare guy steel designed for high ranking drang like knights. Guy steel equipment is the finest make. Do we have another made from. Oh, yeah, Grand Lance and the twin blade. What's here? I don't remember. I feel like it just drops down onto like that section. Where those guys explode on you. Nope, just outside. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember that, okay. Let's go back. I do have a fragrant branch of yore, incidentally. So it's funny, I'm not going to give you the lore that I promised you because I don't have a Ferris Lockstone, but I'm going to give lore that I didn't think I was going to give you, which is probably the best lore in the game. Oh, it definitely makes me wonder, what is this guy, okay, I was like, what is that guy being held up by, but there's a texture it didn't load in. Okay, uh, I don't even want, okay, there's a guy over there, that makes sense, but those guys are not shooting down at you now? Oh, there's one guy up there, okay, well, let's take care of this shit show. They don't really move now, which is nice. Oh, and we have the Bastille key, so we can get, I mean, not that this really does anything, but. Yeah, just the same. Alright, I'm gonna use my Fragon Branch of Yore on this dude. Yeah. This guy has a lot of really cool stuff to say. And I think he's the only animated guy. In like all of Dark Souls. Besides fights, he's the only one that like moves from his spot. And he eventually goes over there too, at least in the original. Still a bit stiff, I'm afraid. <laughs> I must thank you, young traveler. I am strayed. Wandering sorcerer of sorts. I've been a guest for a very long time, but I don't think that anybody will miss me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very good. Very good indeed. Cursed one, weak you may be, but I strength will teach you my spells. Strayed of Olifus. Mock, okay. Now, he has, um, boss 
weapon stuff essentially. Um, I guess that's in another menu. But let's read through what he's got. So do he, he has the Ring of Knowledge. We read about the Ring of Faith, and that was a Vulgan ring. Ring blessed by the High Priest of Vulgan. The clerics in the great city of Vulgan are perennially entrenched in scandalous power struggles, but among the, them remain a few strong-willed upstanding noblemen. A ring used long, long ago in a land that existed where Drang Lake does now. There it is. That's the clincher. That's the whole game's context rests on this one ring and that one sentence. The ancient dragons were once worshipped in several nations, and rumors concerning objects of similar enchantment to this uncommon ring about in min abound in many lands, though their origins are no longer verifiable. Well, we know where the dragon, lingering dragon crest ring comes from, for sure. That was a that was a ring of Venheim. So, Dark Souls Two takes place in in Venheim, which makes a lot of sense once you start putting things together. Um, if you played the game, you think about it. If not, we'll get to it. There's you know plenty more to come and more, many more connections that we can start to make. But Venheim um, is like. For those that wanted Dark Souls 2 to be playing in the universe of Dark Souls, but just in one of the locations that you heard of, essentially we have that. Um, kind of. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the biggest kind of reveal here uh, that uh, puts a lot of different things in context now that we know that Vinheim is uh, during legs, so... And the agape ring. The, a ring affixed with an open vessel. The vessel insatiably absorbs souls in place of its wearer, who is left unaware even of their collection. All things are rooted in souls, but what drives our thirst for them? Abstinence from this elixir may be the truest homage to an enduring self. That seems more just like a challenge ring, but uh, it's cool. Then he has the rouge water. And a lot of spells. Homing Soul Arrow. One of the sorceries devised by Strayed, the great mage of ancient Ulifus. Now, Ulifus certainly sounds like Ulusil to me, but as I think we'll see here in a bit, that may not be the case. Um, strong Magic Shield. Certain members of Melfian Magic Academy scoff at these types of magic. The purists, in particular, are disdainful of anything vaguely linked to sword fighting. Cast light. Light banishes dark and reveals all. Whether this is desired is another matter. Resplendent life. High ranked clerics. Miracle. Cleric for sale of Lindell was a master of miracles who fought in battles across the lands. His allies called him the Holy Knight, but his enemies feared him for his demonic powers. We read that similar one. Um, but it, I think Resplendent Life and the other one we read are similar to the ones that we find in um, the um, Duke's Archives with the Maidens that were turned into Pisakas. So I think these are the high rank clerics. They might be coming from, I mean, especially since based on what the miracles are, they are kind of from a um, Guinevere. Unveil, a miracle that senses traitors, reveals the location of the nearest enemy or invading dark spirit. Those who serve the Lindelt Monastery willfully adhere to strict commandments. This miracle is created to castigate those who ignore the righteous teachings. That's kind of an interesting lore. <laughs> One of the pyromancies devised by Strayed, um, the great mage of ancient Ulifus. Olifus. Strayed was an oddly gifted mage, well-versed in both sorceries and pyromancies, but his curious temperament never allowed him to settle down in one place for very long. One of the great pyromancies devised by Strayed. Strayed, always immersed in magic, never accepted an apprentice. As a result, much of his extensive knowledge is permanently lost. Except for us, I guess. 
a hex from an old sorcery by Galea, the father of hexing. To use hexes equipped, whatever. So we know Dark Arbs comes from Ulusil, and that was developed by a rogue, like a traveling sorcerer in Ulusil around the time that Manus started having influence. A hex modified from an old sorcery by Galea the Hexer. Hexing is rooted in both sorcery and miracles, but it is viewed as a perilous affront to all life and banned in most lands. Dark Fog, another one. Uh, this hex is regarded as a poison due to the outward symptoms, but in fact the mist eats away at the target's, in it, target's inner essence, just the traits that led to the prohibition of hexing. It appears to be a manifestation of an emotion, perhaps of hate, perhaps of love. I mean, it's called affinity. And we can do trade, and I'm glad that he has all of the items. Even if we don't have the... Oh no, we do have all these. Okay, so more will come available. Um, Alright, well let's read these. Pursuer's great sword. Known as the mightiest of the straight swords, it demands great strength and dexterity. 30 and 18. The pursuer hunts down those branded by the curse, as if each undead soul that he claims will atone him for one of his sins. So, the pursuer seems to be one. There's a lot about sin in this game, as in the last game. This is called the Scholar of the First Sin. Well, you'll talk about what the first sin is, by the way. Um, but uh, the pursuer in general, I guess that's why he travels with us so much, is because he sinned so many many times. A curved sword forged from the soul of the Flexile Sentry, once straight but later twisted to reflect its warped owner. The sentry crammed inmates of the overflowing Bastille onto a rickety ship and cast them out to sea. The majority of them drowned or starved, but a few hardy survivors made land to the south and imparted their knowledge of sorcery to the people there. I think that comes into play moving forward. Um, that could be Lanifer. That could be another one we haven't talked about yet, or haven't read a lot about, or we have, but we need to connect it. I can't remember. Um, so there's something unsettling at the same time beautiful about this long curved sword. Yep. Great Axe Forge from the Last Giant Soul. This weapon resembles a primitive stone tool. But it's quite powerful, owing to its immense size. King Vendrick disappeared as of the war with the giants reached it reached its ferocious peak. I don't know about the grammar. Disappeared as of the war with the giants reached. Okay, I think it's King Vendrick disappeared as the war with the giants reached its ferocious peak, leaving his castle some some swear nope periods there. Okay. Uh, some swear that upon hearing the news, the queen's face remained as still as her portrait. So this is news. Um, this is, you know, we'll learn a lot more about this, but, um, Queen, King Vendrick had a queen, of course. And when the war was at its peak, he left the castle and the queen reacted to that in a certain way. A non-reaction. A club forged from the Flexile Sentry. Sentry, yeah, same. The Halberd of the Dragon Riders. King Vendrick's Royal Guard, a highly versatile weapon that can slash, sweep, and thrust when wielded nimbly and is also imbued with magic, demands great skill to the, of its wielder and thus serve to test the worthiness of those who aspire to join the Dragon Riders. Twin Blade of the Dragon Riders. Twin blades are wielded with unusual technique. This one strikes hard but is very heavy. Demands great skill of its wielder. Dragon Rider Bow. Merely drawing this bow requires inhuman strength, but each shot has a deadly potential. For those who can handle the weight of the shield, it offers resistance to curses. The pursuer hunts down those branded by the curse. Dragon Rider Shields. 
The rank of Dragon Rider was reserved for honorable warriors who helped found Drang Lake. Together with the king, they crushed its former inhabitants and erected a magnificent kingdom upon their graves. So Drang Lake used to be many different, um, you know, kingdoms and lands. Um, I won't say too much more about it, we'll, we'll learn it in time. One of the sorceries devised by Strayed, the great mage of Ulifus, fires thick, powerful soul arrows that seek their targets to the ends of the earth. So this is interesting. So this was devised by uh, Strayed, and it requires the ruined sentinel soul, as you know, he is he was trapped here in the um, Lost Bastille. Let's see what he has to say. Oh, how long was I sad? Long enough for the old kingdom to have crumbled, I see. Why didn't anyone wake me sooner? <laughs> so yeah, he's from the previous kingdom that was here. Now, it does mention that he's a traveler, so Ulifes, Ulifes could be a different area. However, I think just for the amount of clues that we get, I think we can safely say that Olifus was the last kingdom that K King Vendrick crushed and then built up his kingdom on top of. Drang Lake. I've never heard the name. Is that what they call this place now? Very good. <laughs> Very good indeed. Sounds like Dragon, Drang Lake. Vinheim was big on dragons. The cursed ones were imprisoned within this land. Of course, you came of your own free will. <laughs> the people feared the cursed ones like a plague. Some people would rather keep dreadful things out of sight, out of mind. In the end, they swept them up and corralled them here. So very typical of meek minds, don't you think? <laughs> Wish he would talk about like the previous king's name and, and more stuff, but he doesn't really mention anything. But he's just giving us a bigger picture of what we've already kind of come to know that, you know, much like the Undead Asylum and all that, that the Undead Curse started to happen and the kingdoms that that happened to all treated them the same way, get them out of here. Um, it also might be that, you know, each king that kind of rises up has... You know, like maybe King Vendrick defeated the four old ones in some way. Um, and that's how he built his kingdom. And that, that it, for each kingdom, the king or the rulers or the, the groups that run those places that become as big as something like Drang Lake or Anne Orlando, they all are formed from the, the actual old souls and that we are essentially like, that's why um, the M.O. Herald asks us the first thing, are you going to be the next monarch? Once people became aware of their own frailty, they seized anybody they found undesirable, cursed or no, and impounded them here. Mm -hmm. Whoever posed even the slightest threat was removed. Oh, so that they could sleep better at night. They even turned the great strain into a stone. <laughs> yeah, so Strayed probably isn't undead, but he's talking about something, again, This you see this in Bloodborne, this idea, too, that there's people that, you know, potentially, uh, he doesn't say it this way here, but, like, they... they do preventative preventative measures um, 
to get people to be, you know, locked up that might turn undead or might cause problems or whatever. He took the opportunity to wield total control <clears throat> over the subjects. It also is interesting to me for Vendrick's case, who doesn't really have a lot of traces of this. Like, we don't see this happen to him. Um, he might have been a good king. Uh, the Undead Curse might have started after he left, but, I mean, he does leave at the peak of the Giant War for a specific reason. And in, instead of taking advantage of a number of things and potentially doing things that have nothing to do with the curse, he left the castle. Where did he go? What did he do? Why did he go? Well, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Many kingdoms rose and fell on this tract of earth. Mine was by no means the first. Anything that has a beginning also has an end. No flame, however brilliant, does not one day splutter and fade. But then, from the ashes, the flame reignites, and a new kingdom is born, sporting a new face. It is all a curse. <laughs> and it is your cursed flesh that will inherit the flame. <laughs> So yeah, what he says there kind of supports my thoughts that, you know, it, linking the analogies of fire to kingdoms rising and falling, also souls and fire and kindling and the first flame and, you know, all that stuff. It's, I mean, I feel like they're kind of breaking canon a little bit here. Um, like, I don't know if we're any longer talking about kindling a flame, and if we're talking about the cycle of the flame going up and down this whole time. Um, I guess we'll see as we go on. Pyromancy was created by the ancient witch of fire. She harnessed the power of flame and melded it into pyromancy. The witch led her daughters into war against the Old Ones. But legends are legends. What are you prepared to believe? <laughs> it's interesting how, yeah, the truth gets distorted a little bit there. Um, Isolith was an Old One, essentially. Or the Queen of Isolith. Um, and... But he, th the legend that exists for these people, or at least the last kingdom, was that the witch and her daughters fought the old ones and built up Isolith. Um, it would maybe imply that Isolith was here. We know that Isolith is in Drang Lake. Uh, it's by Ulasil. It might Ulasil could have been Drang Lake before Drang Lake or Lord Dr or Drang Lake Lordran. Um, but we know where Isolith is. If he's implying that Isolith is here, that's kind of, um, things are kind of warped. But I think we might see moving forward here that um, there is a location in, in this area that, or in this game, that uh, might be where Isolith was. I don't know. Okay. Feeble cursed one. Let's hope the magnificence of my spells does not deter you. <laughs> so yeah, Strayed is a is a great uh, source lore man. In fact, I think he's probably the most central piece of lore um, in the game. In other words, you can get you know, more lore, but I think without the context of his lore, it's it's a little bit empty. Okay, good. Um, I guess
guess we're gonna just go do the lost center. There's a lot of sinning in this game. First sin, sinners rise. The pursuer, or really, what am I supposed to do here? Okay, now there. Okay, so those are not dragons. <clears throat> those are gargoyles. That's cool that you can see them. That never really happened before. I think we heard something in the original game. <clears throat> but I certainly don't remember seeing three gargoyles flying out. Um, I'm hoping that if I light this that no one spawns here anymore. Um, I guess we'll... Okay, so one guy does, but yeah, he doesn't go right at you. That's definitely an improvement over the first game. The original. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see anything else from here. so close. That's yeah, just a big C. I wonder if that area that um, Lydia was looking at was the uh, Lost Bastille, or L Lycia, that I was looking out uh, on Hyde's Tower of Flame, because this might not be connected to anything. We came here via, via a boat and via a an eagle or a bird. So yeah, that's probably what that was. Oh, this is much improved as well. Still not great. Okay. Let's do this. Lacerating knife. Have I not been reading stuff? Are there things that we need to read? This simple weapon is easily utilized, but has limited range. We read that. I think we're good. Alright. Now I know that this changed a lot. There used to be these big things here. Blossom kite shield. Oh, there's just a ruined sentinel. Lucky. Ugh. Shouldn't waste my shouldn't waste my uh, stamina. You draw twinkling as well?
A rare shield depicting a blossoming flower that soothes the weary heart of its bearer. What makes flowers beautiful, and why are we comforted when we gaze upon them? Sadly, the flower depicted on the shield went extinct. Oh, interesting. That's like the chloranthi flower, which is the same as the green blossom. Which we have, but apparently it's extinct. Okay, um, I'm going to see if I can switch shields, by the way, now that we're getting enough. Um, I would like to have one that is good with pairing, but has large leather, blue wooden, here, Drang Lake. Can't use it. Does that parry though? Okay, it does. What do I need for it? 16 strength. Oh, I can't do any of these. So this is too big, right? Okay, well, we'll go with this one for now. I just need a little bit more damage reduction and a bit more surface area. If it was just one flex cell sentry, that I would prefer to like the five malformed beasts or whatever they're called. And now that I have the Bastille key, I can actually just go through this area. Um, okay. That's definitely an improvement. Oh, okay, there's a... Uh, huh, I wonder why he's in here. We can also light up the area. Oh, that's so nice. I'm going to clear it up first. So I don't want to... I'm going to... Oh. I'm going to get my thing all lighting up, but... I'm going to use my torch to light everything, but... I know I'm going to roll in the water. And... Uh, put my torch out, so... Rather not waste. Flame butterflies. Okay. Oh god, those do like most of my health right now. Um, let's do this. And we'll do this. Cool, you don't have to You don't have to go down here and open this thing now. Ooh, Ferris Lockstone. I like that. I still need a couple more. Alright, well I guess I'm gonna go fight a hide knight. Because I wanna. See what's going on over here. Can I? Ooh, a fire seed. Oh, so he's just sitting here. That's nice. Tiny waning flame used to strengthen pyromancy flame. A pyromancy flame serves as the catalyst for pyromancy and scales the strength of each spell according to its level. Fire is a common object of worship. It can never be grasped, and its mystery stokes the human imagination. I feel like, in general, there's just a lot more colorful uh, descriptions and stuff, which I think definitely give it a... I don't know. It's a little bit more pleasant to, to read through some of the stuff. It, it kind of works a little bit more like literature than... Um, I like world building, but I also like beauty. <laughs> so, if we just mash the two games together, we'd have a perfect game. 
So Hide Knight's sword is the same as the fire sword, except it's not ascended. It's not, so you can see there's a little fire here. So it's just a long sword, but it has fire on it, whereas this just has lightning on it. Straight sword originating in Hide. The composition of the alloy makes these swords remain these swords remain a mystery, but in turn, like the attempt to imitate it resulted in similar brad and steel. I think we read that somewhere before. Okay. Now Lugatil's sign is usually back by the elevator and uh, I'll go get her but I'm also gonna just check out this area things things change so I don't know what uh, maybe you can't even summon Luke Teal for this fight anymore but this is nice so yeah I'm gonna use a uh, flame butterfly and then yeah you can light this on fire which lights up the room which actually makes the fight a lot easier got another smooth silky in the uh, new game plus one of the hardest fights I had was the lost center because on the new game plus see like swords and stuff in there um, on New Game Plus you can um, like there's two pyromancers that come out and fight which is uh, yeah that's tough with how fast with how fast the Lost Center can be and uh, just, you know, multiple enemies at once. Uh, is there anything up here to light? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I definitely like that a lot better than the Malformed Beasts. I like just the one Flexile Sentry, which is kind of hard to fight down here. But, you know, once you do it, maybe it never responds to. That would be doubly cool. Alright, come on, Lucatil. Don't fall down now. Yeah, as I say, to do her storyline, we have to summon her and have her uh, not die in the battle. And that goes for a number of other characters whom we haven't met yet. We could have, but we I just didn't go that way. Okay, don't fall in the hole, Lucatil, or the water. Um, let's look back here. So there's a couple of... Yeah, I guess we went down far below, and this is a little bit of a cove. Out to sea, which is pretty cool. Alright. Now... I'm going to talk over this here. If you notice here, um, there's a little bug that crawls into the eye and affects this woman who is a pyromancer. We'll learn from the item descriptions of what she's wearing. But this is said to be uh, Isolith, or the Queen of Isolith. That bug is the same bug. Also works for me to summon a lot for these battles because I'm not as familiar with these boss battles as I am with uh, Dark Souls 1. So 
So yeah, when it's dark, you can easily lose uh, your lock on with her. Come on, Luca Teal, do it. That's it. That's a great soul. Just that. No big deal. Yeah, so I think the pyromancers come out of here. And here. I thought they came out of the ceiling or something, or up there, but I don't know. I guess it's darker over here. Okay, now, I think this is the first door we see like this. Um, I'm not sure, maybe I missed them, but I certainly would take note of this door. And based on a piece of information we learned a few episodes ago, I think it starts to become more relevant. But yeah, it's got that circle up there with a bunch of interlocking circles, like a Celtic thing, and what looks like dragons maybe on there. Looks like there should be one there. I'll give them that and there too. The textures, textures are not great in this game. Ooh, throwing a branch of your and an Elizabeth mushroom. Why is an Elizabeth mushroom here? Specially treated dried mushroom creates a euphoric sensation when ingested and restored to large amount of HP over time. Saint Elizabeth devoted her life to helping the needy by concocting medicines and potions. It's thought her great virtue was matched only by her sublime beauty, but who can say now? Well, she's she was a she she was literally a uh, a mushroom. So I mean, if if you say that that's beauty, some some might. Now, this is interesting. These primal bonfire fires, which I don't really know what that means, but um, the the uh, the sword that is stuck in them is always broken. I don't know how we're able to light bonfires, by the way, in any Souls game. Especially since fire becomes like an element that we play with. I mean, it seems like it could be magic or whatever. Um, but in Demon Souls, I guess it was just like a power that we had. You have acquired the soul of an old one. That is more than most undead can say. That's all you're gonna say? That tiny thing provided you. Okay. So we got decks up to. I think I just need more. Endurance here. Man, you can just level up like crazy in this game. Wow. I feel like I need my strength up because I'm going to be using more shields and uh, different weapons, maybe. Alright, so now. And I haven't been doing this. We call this place. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I want. <sighs> Just want to buy 17 of these, please. Thank you. All right. Um, so yeah, we have a few people to talk to, I guess. Moglin. Oh, hello again. Uh, I hope you find something of use. Hmm. Okay. So I guess there's an event that makes him sell the boss items. Well, I that's disappointing. So yeah, we'll learn more about the Lost Sinner once he starts carrying. Uh, and we'll have to speak to Kale, although he doesn't really say much of anything. Even more flames have appeared. I don't know what causes it. But there is something. It seems to fall. Something... 
I would not vent. Okay, so basically we never come back and talk to him until we've lit all of them, including the Watcher and Defender. Woman, regret, lost sinner. Vision's a boss, therefore a giant. Yeah, see, I think that's the force of fallen giants. Very clever uh, um, messages here. Shade, therefore tough enemy. I guess that could be the the rotten. What are the other big souls? Doesn't matter. Um, anyway. Okay, just checking. Okay, well then that will be it for this episode. Um, I guess the next thing that I want to do here is uh, kind of do a loose ends video and kind of go back to some of the places that we, uh, I don't know, we should have gone before. And we'll see how much we can get done. There's already a ton. Like, there's already a ton of things that we need to do. So uh, I'll just say goodbye for now. Ta-ta. And we'll talk next video.